What's going on guys and welcome back. This is episode number two in this drag and drop mini series that I'm doing. So if you haven't seen part one, definitely head back and check that out. I will leave a link to that in the description. So I'm basically just gonna pick up right where we left off in the last video. As you can see, I have our final product open. So if you haven't seen the first video, this is what we're building for this series. And let's just jump over and look at what we actually built for the last video. So the last video we got these slots actually set up using our JavaScript function that we built. So if we jump back over to the code that we wrote here, the first function that we've added so far was the add image slots function. And that's what's drawing those on the screen. So what we're gonna be looking at next is we're gonna actually look at this next function that we're calling inside of our init, which is actually the draw images. So this is the function that's obviously gonna add those images to the actual DOM and show them on the slots. So over here on this right side where our finished product is, I'm just gonna go ahead and minimize this function because we already wrote it. So I'm gonna be taking a look at the draw images function now. And so this function is a little bit more complicated. You'll notice that it's a little bit longer than the function that we wrote first. And that's because we need to do a little bit more math in this function. So let's take a look at what we're doing. So let's first define this function. So we'll build a function called draw images and inside this function, we're gonna be running through another loop again because we want to run through the images that we're gonna be drawing. So the way I built this, there are actually image slots. If we jump back over to where our demo was, this right here, there is actually an image here, but it is empty. So if we go ahead and open this container, you'll notice that there is an image right here. So this is the slot, and then this is the image that's sitting on that slot and it has a class called DD disabled, which basically just hides it from the view since it doesn't actually have an image associated with it. And the reason I did this was because if you wanted to easily add and remove items, it's easier, easier to just hide it rather than, you know, have to continuously manipulate the DOM elements that exist inside of our body. And so that's why if we jump back over to our code, we're actually going to be running through again, all of our image slots when we draw these out, because we're going to have one for each slot. It's just whether or not it's going to be visible to the user or not. So the first thing we'll start with is our I variable, our iterator. And we're gonna be running through, like I said, that number of image slots. And we're gonna be doing what we did in the first one and defining our item, because the item is going to be the actual div element that we're creating for this image. So let's skip some of this stuff for now and jump down into our for loop. So we're gonna be defining a for loop here. I is less than length and I plus plus. So the first thing we're gonna do inside of here is we'll actually do what we did in our previous function and we'll first create that item. So we're gonna be doing our doc.create element and we're gonna be creating another div in this case as well. And so before we continue, there's a couple more variables we're gonna to need to add. As you can see, there are a lot of variables that we have defined at the top of this function. And we're gonna go ahead and add these variables because these are actually what we need to make sure that we're sizing this item that we're creating correctly and positioning it correctly as well. So in this case, let's define a new slot variable. And this is actually going to be this, the first slot in this case that we find with the DD slot class. So we're gonna get it at the first index. So this is gonna grab us that first element on the screen. And if you'll remember that DD slot is coming from right up here where we create the slot elements. And so really the reason we're doing this is we're just, we just wanna get one of those slots so we can actually figure out its size and then use that size when we actually create the images that we're creating right now. So first we'll get the bounds. And so we're gonna get the slot and that'll be the get bounding client rect, which is actually gonna get us six properties that we can potentially use. So that's gonna be the width, height, left, top, right, and bottom, I believe. So those would be the six different properties that we have access to. So in this case, we're gonna be getting the items width in this case. So we'll take the bounds.width and then the item height is going to be the bounds Dot height. So now what we have here is this item width is holding the size or the width in this case of this actual slot on our screen. And if you'll remember, the slot is actually larger than this actual border because the border has a negative inset. So if we take a look at this here, you'll notice that the green part is actually what that box looks like. So if we jump back over here, in this situation, this item width is actually going to be that width that we see here, the 333. 
And that makes sense because our container is actually a thousand pixels wide. So 33 is going to obviously be the middle or third of that piece since we have three of these in a row here. So now the next piece besides getting the width and height of this item that we're trying to create, we also want to be able to position these items. So we're gonna define two more variables, but we're not gonna give them a value right now. We're just going to say that we wanna set the items X and items Y position eventually, but just not yet. So now to actually get the correct position for this element, if we jump into our for loop, we're gonna be defining these differently for each item that we create, because we want them to each have a different X and Y position inside of this container. So we'll start with the item X and say that that's equal in this case to the I modulus, the number of images per row, and then we're gonna multiply that by the item width. So I'll explain what we're actually doing here. So if you haven't used modulus before, modulus essentially divides, it'll do I divided by the number of images per row, except it'll get you the remainder. So in this case, the first time it runs through this, I is gonna be equal to zero. So if we do I or zero modulus, the number of images per row, which in this case is three, we're gonna be getting zero for that because obviously zero divided by three is zero with no remainder. Whereas on the next time it runs through, it'll be one divided by three, and the remainder in that case is going to be one because obviously one doesn't go into three, so it's just gonna have that one left over. And it'll be the same thing when we do two modulus three because that's gonna equal two, but then when we get to three modulus three, it's going to equal zero again in this case because there's no remainder. So we're gonna be looking at a pattern here of zero, one, two, zero, one, two, and so on. And that's what's going to give us the position on the X value because we're then multiplying that value that we're getting here by the width. So if we look back over here, the first value is obviously gonna be zero, which is gonna put it right here in this corner. And then the next one is gonna be one times the width, which is gonna put it over here. And then the next one's gonna be two times the width, so it's gonna put it over here. And then it's gonna go back to zero for this one. So we're basically running through each of these in the row. So now if we take a look at what we need to do with the Y value, it's a little bit different. So in this case, we're gonna be math.flooring, which is basically gonna round us down to the whole, the closest whole number. And we're gonna be doing I divided by that number of image slots per row. And then we're just gonna be multiplying that afterwards by the item height plus that image margin that we created. So the image margin bottom, we're just gonna add that into the Y value. So now in the first time it runs through this, obviously, I is going to be zero, and we're gonna be dividing by three for the number of images per row, which in this case is going to equal zero, and then we're just rounding that down, but obviously zero is you know, zero. So the next part is gonna be one divided by three, which is then going to be you know, 0.333, but we're again, we're rounding that down to the nearest whole number, so it's gonna end up equaling zero. And then same thing for two divided by three is going to equal our 0.667, which is then going to get rounded to zero. So you'll notice all three of these are zero. But then obviously when we jump to three divided by three, we're gonna be getting one now, and that's gonna be the closest whole number. So the pattern you're gonna see is zero, 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 one, 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 and so on. And that's what's gonna get us our Y value, zero, 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 one, 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 two, 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 and so on. So now that we actually know the width, the height, the X and the Y value that we want for each item, we can actually apply that now to the item. So let's just say our item.set attribute, and we're gonna set the style in this case like we did for the items up here. We're going to set the width equal in this case to our item width. So we want it to be the same as the slot. And we're gonna make sure that's in pixels in this case. And then we're going to set the height equal to that item height that we defined above. And then we're going to make sure we put pixels at the end of that. And then we're going to now define a transform. So we'll jump back inside of our string because we want to define a transform. And we're going to do a translate 3D on this. And we're going to need three values here. And these two are going to be pixel values. 
So this zero is actually going to be that item X that we just created. So that's gonna be our X position. And then this zero here is going to be our Y position. And that's really all we need now because we just sized it and positioned it correctly. Really all that's left is to add it to that actual element. So what we'll do is we'll grab, just like we did in our previous function, we'll grab the wrap as the doc.getElementById, and we're gonna grab that drag drop div again that we wanna put these items inside of. And then firstly, before we append these items inside of that wrapper that we're doing right here, let's first add the class that we want this to be so that we can actually see it on the screen. So what we're gonna do is above our styling here, we're gonna set the item or set attribute class and we're gonna give that class a DD item. And then we have a DD transition class, which is actually going to give us the transition effect, which is the smooth transitioning when they actually move from one slot to another. And so now before we go any further, let's just define these classes that we just created. So obviously DD item has some styles up here at the top. So we can see DD item is actually defined with all of these styles right here. So if we jump up to our top now, and let's just make some space and define our DD item. And we're gonna need this to be positioned absolute because we're gonna be moving it around freely. And then we want it to be relative to the left and top of this container that it's inside of. And then because we're gonna be adding some padding, let's just add a box size border box in here. And we're gonna add that padding of 10 pixels that we have previously. And then we'll just add a cursor pointer so that they know that they can click on it and drag it around. And then we can also just quickly add in our DD transition class up here as well, because I think we're gonna, our, this might be the only place we actually use it, but our DD transition um, will define a new transition here. And in this case, we're doing transition on all properties over 0.3 seconds, and we'll just give it an ease. So now that that class is defined, let's jump back down here into where we're drawing those. And we need to add a little bit more and I'm just gonna minimize this function so it's easier to see what we're doing. And now I'm just gonna call to our wrap and we're gonna do an append child. And we're just going to append in this case, the item that we just created right here. And then lastly, before we actually go and take a look at this, cause we're not actually gonna see anything right now just because you know we haven't actually given our boxes that we created any kind of color attributes or anything that would allow us to actually see it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some inner HTML in this case. So we're going to do our item inner HTML and we're gonna set that to a string now where we're going to actually add our elements that need to go inside of this thing. So we'll create a new div here and we're gonna be giving this div that we create a class of DD item inner. So this is gonna be the box that sits inside of the box that we just created. And then it's also gonna have that DD shadow class, which if we take a look at our original, you can see there's a nice little shadow around these images as well as around this panel. And it gives it a nice little effect that just makes it easier to see and pop out at you more. So again, quickly before we continue adding out in our HTML here, let's actually just define these classes up at the top. So if we take a look at what those classes look like, so we have our DD item inner, and that's our class that's actually right here. So let's add in the properties for that class. So we'll say our item inner is going to have a background in this case of no repeat, and we're gonna have a background size in this case of cover so that that image not contain we want cover so that that image takes up that full box and then we want to also make sure that this image is posi positioned in the center of our box and then we also just want to make sure that this box is going to be a hundred percent and a hundred percent on both the width and height so the reason we give it a hundred percent on the width and a hundred percent on the height is because we want it to be the full size of the dd item that this inner tag is sitting inside of. And then lastly, we'll just give this a position relative because I believe there is an element that is inside of it with a position absolute, which I believe is the panel. And so quickly, we'll also add that DD shadow class up here to give us that nice box shadow. So we're going to define a new box shadow and it's gonna be zero on the X and Y. And then we're gonna do a three pixel spread 
and a one pixel blur, I think. I can't remember exactly what each of those pixel values is for, um, but we're also just going to give this a color of 0, 0, 0, 0.3, and that's going to be black, a faint black color. So now that those classes are defined, let's just jump back down now to our draw images function and let's take a look at the next piece that we want to add to this inner HTML that we're creating. Let's give ourselves another space here. And so now inside of this div, we're not going to worry about the background just yet, but inside of this div, we're going to be creating another div because we want to add that panel now just because it looks nice with the title inside of that panel. So we're going to give this new div a class of item panel and we're also going to give it that same shadow class as well. And then so let's give some styles to that item panel now. So if we jump back up here we can see what we're actually defining for this panel. And so we'll put that right under here with our DD item panel. And now we're going to be giving this a width of 80% in this case. So it's going to take up 80% of the containers width. And then we'll just give it a generic height of 35 pixels. And we're going to make the background just a solid white color. And then we're going to make sure that we position this thing absolute. And now we're just going to give it a left of 10%. Since the width is 80%, we're pushing it left 10%. So that should center it in the middle on the X value. And then we'll just give it a bottom of negative 15 pixels, which is just going to make it sit off of the bottom a little bit. And then just a Z index of 5 to make sure that it's sitting on top of everything else that we have. And then lastly, while we're up here, I might as well just add in the uh, item title class as well, because that's going to be the next element that we actually put inside of this panel. So if we just give it a font size of 15 pixels, and then let's just define the color and I'm just going to copy the color I used over here. Um, I think it's like a nice bluish color, like dark blue. And then we're going to do a text align center on those. And we'll just give it a margin bottom of three pixels in this case. And I can't remember exactly why I have that margin bottom there. Um, but in this case, we won't worry about it. And we'll just give it a height of 16 pixels. And actually, I think at one point, um, let me take a look. So we're defining it as an H3. So in this case, instead of doing the styles the way we did here, I'm actually going to remove the height and the margin that we have going on here. And I'm just going to give it a line height of 35 pixels in this case, because that's what we're using as the height for this panel. So if we just make the line height 35 pixels, it should basically center that text vertically for us inside of that box. And so before we take a look at what this looks like, I'm just going to go ahead and also add a background to our box of white just so we can see those items on the screen. Otherwise, it's just going to be panels because we haven't actually added background images to each of the items yet. So if we scroll back down here, the last thing we want to do is add in that actual H3 tag that we just gave styles for. And we're going to make sure that that H3 has that class, um, the class being the DD item title. And then for this, I'll just put in some static text that we can use to see what this looks like. Okay, so let's take a look at what this actually looks like now on our screen. So if we refresh, we obviously have a console error. And let's see where that error was. And you guys may have already noticed. So we had a console error. And that was just because I actually forgot to put a plus sign right here. So it was kind of erroring out because it wasn't sure what the heck to do with that without a plus sign. So it should work now if we refresh. And of course, we forgot one more thing to make this work. We actually need to put that function call inside of our init so that it actually calls when we load the page. And so you'll notice now that it's looking pretty good. There's just one little funky thing going on because our white border is actually sitting um, outside because I put the background white. Um, the white background that I put is actually supposed to be on that inner panel, not on the item itself. So if we delete it from here and add it to here, it'll look a lot better on our screen and it'll get rid of that little bit of weird extra bit that we had around the edges. All right, guys, awesome. So that will conclude uh, episode number two for this drag and drop. And I know we haven't actually gotten to that drag and drop functionality yet, but the first two videos were kind of just getting our HTML and CSS set up so that we can start actually scripting some of that drag and drop functionality that you guys are waiting for. So be sure to continue watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.